Hey everyone, my name is Stephen Moyes and I'm a program manager on the React Native team at Microsoft. I'm super excited to virtually chat with you all today and give you some insight into using React Native to build great apps for desktops and dual screens. At last year's React Native EU conference, my friends EJ Lane and Michael Lewis described how you can use React Native to build highly performant, great apps using React Native for Windows. This year, I'll share how we're making it possible to bring your apps not just to Windows, but to Mac OS as well. I'll finish up by briefly touching upon how we're making it possible to make your apps dual screen aware and target even more emerging devices like the new Surface Duo Android device. This talk will be structured in a Q&A format. I will ask a question that the team has heard from the community, and then I will answer that question. Let's get started. Our first question is, what does Microsoft bring to React Native? Since you're attending this conference, you probably already know a thing or two about React Native. You know that it has a huge developer community and that hundreds of apps are built using React Native. You know that React Native apps are truly native apps, which means that they have the best user experience, they have the best performance, and that they have accessibility built in. At Microsoft, we really want to amplify those benefits and help bring React Native and your apps to even more endpoints and devices. We know that developers like using JavaScript and TypeScript to create native experiences for Android and iOS, and we want to extend that awesomeness to desktops as well. We want to participate in the community as co-contributors and help make React Native a really great platform, not just for mobile, but also for desktop. This leads us into our next question, which is, can I use React Native to reach desktops? Now, if you're called into this presentation, you probably already know that the answer is yes, you can absolutely use React Native to target desktops. But when you think about React Native, you're probably more familiar with building native apps that target iOS and Android. What we're doing is we're working to extend the number of endpoints and the number of users that you can reach by including support for Windows and Mac OS as well. Now, when I say that we're supporting Windows and that we're supporting Mac OS, what I really mean is that these endpoints are really just extensions of the React Native core. They extend the shared common components that are used already in Android and iOS, and they just add additional support for Windows and Mac OS. To help demonstrate that Windows and Mac OS support is built on top of the, common, the same common core, I'm going to show an RSS feed demo app running on Mac OS. Now, you might recognize this sample from this year's Build Conference, where my peer Kiki St. Tonge built this app from scratch. I'll include a link at the end of the presentation, and I'd encourage you to go check out that video, but I wanted to quickly introduce you to this app because I'll be discussing it throughout the presentation. Here, I've got the RSS Reader app running. I've cloned it from the repo, and I've followed the steps in the README to get it up and running. The app is pretty basic. It has an RSS feed uh, on, the, on the left <laughs> and uh, the actual blog post rendered on the right. Although it is pretty simple in function, it embodies several important features, including the ability to run on both desktop platforms in Windows and Mac OS, as well as including some important native modules, such as the web view component and the RSS parser module. One additional thing that I would like to mention is that Microsoft and Facebook are co-collaborating on bringing React Native to desktop. It's not just Microsoft. In fact, there's a whole team within Facebook working on React Native for desktop, and they're working to make uh, React Native for desktop a great endpoint for building industry-grade applications. That ties into the next question. Who is using React Native for desktop? I'm going to highlight just a few folks, but I just mentioned that there is a dedicated team within Facebook working on React Native for desktop. Part of the reason that they have a dedicated team is to support the Messenger app on desktop. The Messenger desktop team is building a delightful native video calling experience that targets Windows and Mac OS. And they're using React Native to help them build their app. 
Although they were originally looking at Electron, they're using React Native to unlock system capabilities that simply can't be achieved using Electron. That's why the team is looking at React Native uh, for desktop. Let's take a look at another example. The Xbox beta app on PC lets you browse, manage, and download games to your PC. As a storefront, user experience is very important to the Xbox team because they want to have users deeply engaged with their content. In this video, you see the rich animations and multimedia capabilities of the Xbox app. Similar to Messenger, the Xbox app initially explored using Electron, but found React Native helped them make a super performant, great, uh, super performant app that had a great user experience. In their tests, the Xbox team found that memory consumption went from 1.6 gigs all the way down to 350 megs. CPU usage spikes went from 50% down to 30%. And users are taking notice. In a survey, the team found that over 95% of users surveyed noticed that the app's performance was the same as or better than before. Not only that, the team was able to port their entire app from, from Electron to React Native with just a few devs in a few short months. Now let me give you a more recent example, the Microsoft Store on Xbox console. The Xbox team was able to use their JavaScript and React Native for Windows skills to make a highly performant store experience for the next generation of Xbox consoles. Now, although this isn't a desktop experience, I really wanted to highlight this app because it shows the power of React Native for Windows. You can use React Native for Windows to target even more endpoints, and it's not just mobile anymore. Think of all the customers that you can target using React Native for desktop. Now, hopefully these examples got you pumped to try building a React Native app for desktop. The next question is, how can I get started? Getting started building a React Native app that targets Windows and Mac OS should feel very familiar if you've ever used the existing command line tools. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show a quick demo using the CLI to build a Mac OS app from scratch. The first thing I'm going to do is visit aka.ms slash React Native to see how to get started. There are links here to get started with both Windows and Mac OS, so I'm gonna click the Mac OS link. The first command I'll put into the terminal is npx react native init uh, my project with a version. This is the same step that you would take if you're writing any old react native app. I'm going to speed up time through parts of my demo. Uh, note that I've also got my development environment already set up for react native development. I've already got node, I've already got CocoaPod set up, um, I've already got everything set up as if I was writing just a regular old react native app. Now, see the instructions for Windows and Mac OS are shown on, uh, at the end of the CLI. Next, I'm going to go into my project directory and do npx react native uh, Mac OS init. This will install all of the modules that are required for creating a Mac OS application and run it locally. Um, again, I'm going to fast forward through a few of these pieces. And finally, um, once it's all done, I will just do npx react native run mac os. This should feel very similar to uh, if you've ever run for iOS or for Android or for Windows. And what this does is it builds the app, uh, it uh, launches the Metro Bundler, and then in a few seconds here, uh, we should see the mac os app uh, running. Almost there. There we go. Look, we've got a welcome to React standard app. Uh, let me resize it here so that we can see what's going on. And then I'm going to, uh, in classic demo fashion, make a change and, and see it live. So I'm going to open VS Code here. And then I'm going to navigate to um, uh, app.js. Uh, and let me move this over here and bring this to the foreground. And then scroll down, and I'm going to replace some text here. Uh, da, 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 da. and then replace this with hello from React Native Mac, uh, Mac OS. Awesome, and then we can see the change. Now on screen, I'm including the steps that it took to build a Mac OS application, as well as the corresponding steps for Windows. 
We're trying to make these steps as consistent and familiar as possible. And for full instructions, you can visit aka.ms slash react native to learn more. Now, once you get your app up and running, you might be asking yourself, uh, what modules are available for React Native for desktop? Now, one of the awesome things that differentiates React Native from other platforms is the vast library of native modules that you can use to add functionality to your app. There are hundreds of modules that encapsulate a ton of different features from navigation to camera to Bluetooth to more. There's modules for everything, it seems. And I wanted to quickly highlight reactnative.directory, which is a website that catalogs uh, a ton of these modules. You can search and filter on reactnative.directory to find modules that fit your needs. Additionally, the team has worked closely with Expo and the community to add filters that show Windows and macOS modules. Although we're always working to add support for new modules, one thing that I should mention is that adding desktop support to existing modules is still a work in progress. We've got quite a few that I've listed on screen, um, but there's still more work to be done. Why is that? Because most modules were written for mobile first, the user expectations for these modules sometimes requires rethinking how the module works on desktop. Modules that aren't purely JavaScript and that have native code written in Java or Objective-C uh, they require native implementations for Windows and Mac OS as well. Fortunately, it's fairly easy to an, uh, adapt an iOS module for Mac OS since a bunch of the code can be shared. On Windows, you'll have to add Windows-specific code written in either C Sharp or C++. Now, one specific library that I'd like to discuss is the Fluent UI React Native library. This feeds into my next question, how can I get Fluent design in my React Native app? For those of you who need a refresher or don't know what the Fluent Design System is, it's really Microsoft's point of view about how to build great user experiences. If you're familiar with Google's material design or Apple's human interface guidelines, this is kind of a similar concept. Fluent Design is our shared DNA and a way to bring principled design, innovation, and customer needs together into one open design system. The Fluent Design System really is a holistic system for building productive apps no matter what endpoint you choose to target. It includes everything from guidance and fundamentals through to design toolkits, through code and UI libraries, and documentation. Whether you are a designer or a developer, the Fluent Design System can help you build really great user experiences. Since we're talking about React Native though, I wanna focus on the Fluent UI React Native library. The Fluent UI React Native library is a supplemental set of components and styles that are layered on top of the core React Native platform. These components are customizable, they're theme aware, and they have accessibility built in. I wanna give you a few quick examples. The first example is a primitive button. Button is really a fundamental piece of the native UI experience and therefore looks and feels natural on each device. What I'm showing you on screen is that Fluent UI is providing a consistency between devices in terms of accessibility, styleability, and end user experience. Other primitives, like text, should also feel natural on each device. In this example, the text elements use the native fonts for each platform like Roboto on Android, San Francisco on Apple, and Sego UI on Windows devices. What Fluent UI brings here is a consistent sizing and type ramp. Finally, some experiences should look consistent across devices, like the Persona coin, which represents you as a person. You don't fundamentally change based on which device you're using, and neither should the representation of you on that device. Fluent UI helps encapsulate this thinking and this logic and helps you build productive experiences by combining stock React Native as well as Fluent UI principles into a single library. This helps you really create productive apps that feel natural on every endpoint, whether it's mobile or desktop. Finally, I'd like to touch just a little bit about how you can bring your app to even more devices, including emerging devices such as uh, those with two screens. The next question is, what about dual screen devices? Now at Microsoft, 
we're really dedicated to helping you increase your app's reach to more endpoints and to more users, including not just those on mobile and desktop, but those on emerging form factors as well. One such emerging form factor is the dual screen mobile device, like the Surface Duo. Now, since the Surface Duo is just another Android device, you can of course use React Native to build apps for it. But what Microsoft is providing is an additional set of dual screen aware APIs and controls that will allow you to build really great experiences that are dual screen aware. One such API is the two pane view component that helps you build apps that are dual screen aware by having two panes. Another API is dual screen info. This provides lower level information about the state of the app. Is it spanned? Is it you know, on both screens or just one? As well as orientation information about the device. You can visit us on GitHub to get started with both of these APIs. Now let's take a minute to see some of these new APIs in action. I'm gonna bring up the RSS feed app here running on the Surface Duo emulator. I've updated the app to be dual screen aware using the two pane view control. I've placed the RSS feed list in the first pane and the web view in the second pane. When the app is running on just a single screen, all we see is the list in pane one. But when we make the app span both screens, we can see that both panes render. Since the Duo emulator is still in preview, you might notice some rendering glitches and we're working on fixing them, but I wanted to show off uh, this demo. Let me recap. We've now seen the RSS feed app running on macOS, on Windows, and on the Surface Duo. We also saw how the Xbox team is bringing their store experience to both Windows and the Xbox console. Hopefully you can imagine how you can now use React Native for desktops and the new dual screen APIs to extend your apps beyond just mobile and reach so many more users. The next question is, where can I go to learn more? How can I connect with the team? I'd like to highlight a few resources to help you get started. Throughout this presentation, I referenced the RSS Reader application, which my peer Kiki St. Ange helped create for the Build 2020 conference earlier this year. If you want to learn more nitty gritty details about how the RSS Reader app is constructed, how it was set up, uh, how to integrate several native modules, um, I encourage you to go watch the video at aka.ms slash m365sk119. Uh, to learn more. I also wanted to call out to my friends Micah and EJ, who presented at last year's React Native EU conference. In their talk, they described Microsoft's overall strategy around React Native and also described how apps like Word leverage React Native to build really cohesive experiences across mobile and desktop. Finally, I'd like to mention that all of these resources and more can be found at aka.ms slash React Native, which acts as our one-stop shop for all things React Native at Microsoft. From the website, you can learn about how you can get started building React Native apps that target Windows and Mac OS, as well as API documentation, uh, native module documentation, uh, information about Fluent UI React Native, and more. If you'd like to connect with the team, I'd recommend reaching out to us on Twitter at React Native MSFT. We're active both on Twitter and on GitHub, so please do reach out. Whether you're starting from scratch or extending your app's reach to the billions of users on desktops, we are excited to see what you build using React Native. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Stephen Moyes, and I hope to catch you around. Goodbye.